Dear Your Royal Highness Queen Victoria, you have traded in China for 200 years, and as a result, your country has become wealthy. But after this long period of trade, there appears among the crowd of barbarians both good persons and bad. There are those who smuggle opium to seduce the Chinese people and cause the spread of the poison to all provinces. Such persons who only care for profit themselves and disregard their harm to others are not tolerated by Chinese law and are hated. Those barbarians who through the years have been selling opium, then the deep harm they have caused and the great profit they have made should justify their execution according to law. I am sending you this letter to reiterate the seriousness with which we enforce the law of the Celestial Empire and to make sure that merchants from your honorable country will not attempt to violate it again. In order to guarantee the peace of your nation, to show further the sincerity of your politeness and submissiveness, and to let the two countries enjoy together the blessings of peace. After receiving this dispatch, will you immediately give us a prompt reply regarding the details and circumstances of your stopping the opium traffic. Yours sincerely, Lin Zisu, Commissioner of the Celestial Empire. You got something to say to me? Didn't think so. You're the sick man of Asia. You're weak, just like your country. Son, what happened? Why are your pants so dirty? Some Kuala pushed me. They think they're better than everybody. They have no civilization. But our weak emperor signed the country away to them. Damn those Manchurians. Father, we can't continue living like this. You left Toisan because the war destroyed our crops and caused famine. You moved to Kongzhou because, well, to do business as farmers. And yet, you're taxed for goods that are made in China. England made up some bullshit about most favored nation in order to push us around. Look, most of your family has already left Toisan. Let me go to Hong Kong. They just... No, those devils took Hong Kong from us. We cannot have you with them. Right now, we will starve. So we don't have much choice. Mom, I leave in a week. Ho-Ping, they said you were going away. Why? Well, I don't want to. I just can't stay here. There's nothing here. My father's starving. And he works so hard, but he's, all his money's going to taxes. And there's too many of us here. But I will miss this place. I'll miss all the people. Will you miss me a little bit, at least? I'll miss you a lot. I'll make sure I write to you. 
I'll look forward to those letters, and I'll write too. Hey, excuse me, older brother. Ah, you must be from Toy Song. Mm. It's good to hear from someone from the hometown. How are things in Toy Song? Well, no jobs, no food, famine, drought, flood. This all came about after the Opium War. Don't we all know it? Excuse me, older brother, can you please tell me where to find a job? I mean, I heard in America there's lots of opportunities to do so. I need to help provide for my family. Yeah, you and your 10,000 brothers. Mm. I hear this story all the time. I tell you what, head down to the wharf and look for an American ship. It's the one with the Fake, or flowery flag. I heard they found gold from the mountains of California. So you'll be going to Kamsan. Thank you, older brother. How come you're not going? I must not be brave. I prefer familiarity. You don't know what's happening out there. I'm sure it's happening here as well. I make enough at the noodle shop. It's not a lot, but it's enough for me. So when you come back as a rich man, don't forget about me. Brothers, are you looking for Gold Mountain too? I'm Wang Hoping from Toy San. I'm Lee Dakwa from Lee Village, Toy San. Me and my brother Dakwa are looking for Gold Mountain. Do you think the rose will be sprinkled with gold? You idiot. You have to go searching and digging for gold. But what do you search at? How do you find it? I don't know. That's why I brought my magnetic compass. The Chinese invented it. That's how we find everything. We know. We're Chinese. I think it's at Sacramento. Ifao. Ifao? Yeah. San Francisco is Dafao, the big city. Sacramento is Ifao, the second biggest city. Stockton is Zamfao, the third biggest. It's where you go to find Chinese. But first, you need to buy some pans. Well, damn. Can this work? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> This looks like the place. Just make sure we don't get too close to the mountains because there's probably a lot of people already there. I read somewhere that the mine will stream and leak material into the stream bed. 
we catch it in a rocker box, rock it around, separate the gold from the rocks. That's how we're gonna do it. All right, you guys can take over there. I'll take on this area. You have to make sure no one steals from us. Since my departure in Hong Kong, she and I are each in different places. A long separation makes a person even more miserable. How can one ever forget home, sweet home? Stranded in a foreign country, in dreams my soul encircles my village home. Words to wife and children? Don't worry. You won't have to wait too long. Once I amass the gold, I will be on my way. Yo, wake up, wake up. Oh, that's gold! Oh What's going on? It's commotion. That ain't worth shit. But you know what is worth something? You're a foreigner. Have you paid your taxes yet? I don't recall seeing you earlier. Let me see your receipt. You see this? This is the law. It's called a foreign miners tax. It's been around since 1850. But when Governor McDougal was in office, he liked you Chinamen and repealed it. But now it's Governor Bigler's turn, and he don't like you chinks. The tax has been reenacted. It's three dollars a month for you foreigners. No money. No money? Well, then you gotta go to jail. <laughs> Run! I roam America undocumented. White men blackmail me with many demands. I say one thing, they another. I want to complain of injustice, but my tongue stutters. At a loss for words, I rack my brain for a solution to no avail. Thrown into a prison cage, I cannot fly away. Don't you think this is cruel? Don't you think this is cruel? It's funny, we actually have enough money to go back home. You're coming with me, right? I'll meet you there. I can't leave my goal. Well, you should come with me soon. You can't keep that money in America. You heard what those devils said. They're gonna tax you on all your gold. And your gold won't want you to waste all that money on all those devils. I'll tell you what. You go back home to your family and you send them the money. 
when you come back to go see your brother. You could even buy a regular ticket to go see him. Yeah, you're right. I really hope my uncle will be okay. I gotta check up on him first. Then I'll meet you soon in China. I expect to see you with child in Toysan. Well, I have to see what she says first. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Lee Dokwa. See you soon, Wang Ho Ping. Mm. No. Hi, 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 America. Have you eaten? My mom's been missing you. She wants you to visit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I just, I okay. just need some air. Okay. Uh, alone. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. You are. How are you? Welcome back, Ho Ping. I sorry I didn't say hi. I you seem busy and I saw all those girls there and it just seemed so so degrading. You have to help me. My mom, she seems intent on marrying me to one of those gold diggers. One gold digger for another gold digger. What? What are you did you get my letter? Just one, but I'm not your wife or child. It seemed pretty generic. Generic? How could you... S well, it was only generic because I didn't know how the reader would respond. How should the reader respond? Well, if you were a man, you'd praise my eloquence. If you were one of those gold diggers, you'd praise my eloquence and say that Le Bac couldn't write any better. But since you are you, you question why my, my writing is generic. Just so you know, besides my family, you are the only one I've written to. Therefore, your answer is the only correct response. <laughs> what are you saying? What I'm saying is, we've been friends and neighbors since our families have moved to Gongzhou over a year ago. Now that I have money, I'd like to live a much more simple life and move back to Toysan. So go. What's stopping you now? Do you just want to say goodbye again and write me another letter? You are making this <laughs> very difficult. No wonder you're still single. Well, I hope for not too long. What I'm trying to say is, I can't stop thinking about you and missing you. And I'd like to spend the rest of my life with you. I know I'm not worthy, but I am wealthy. Ho. What? What was that? I, I, I can hear. Ho, 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 ho. What do we do now? We fought the white devils, and after the second opium war, we were forced to give up more rights. Those devils, they actually think they have extra territory over China, where they rule and we're forced to obey. That civil war, it hurt us. First, it was the red turbans, who rightfully so wanted to kick out the weak ass Manchurians, then lost. Then it was Hong Xinquan with Taiping. They succumbed to the violence, to the greed and corruption, and became all like the rest of them. The Taipings took some of our goods. 
They say we are too excessive. Though the long hairs are gone, the black flags are still around. I heard something like 20, 70 million people died during the Taiping Rebellion. Many children are suffering. The widows have suffered much too. Mrs. Eng has been forced to sell all her goods after her husband died. It's awful. We must not be passive. Let's send Sing Dan to America, where he could find his uncles. I am sure they will help. Is it safe? I think they passed many laws against the Chinese in America. I heard that since 1854, the Chinese can't testify against whites, so they're blaming everything on them. They, th they think that we're Indians and that there is no such thing as an honest Indian. What kind of country is this? Can we send him over to a country of devils? What does he have here? At least in America, he could forge to find an opportunity to come back a wealthy man like I did. But too many families have been forgotten by their Gumsan Hak sons. My relatives in Thailand and Malaysia haven't been able to return ever since the Qing Edict banning merchants. But if they forget about us, what's the point of sending them over? I have an idea. Let's marry Sing Don off. And if she gets pregnant, all the better. I raised him to become an honorable man where he thinks about his family and his country. When should he leave? He's only 15, a young man. I think soon. I will make sure I write to my brothers to look out for him. A lot has changed since I was there. They must take care of him. But when should he marry and who should he marry? Elizabeth woke, awoke the next morning to the same thoughts and me, me, med, 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 meditation? Meditation. Oh, meditation. How come you're so smart? Well, because I pay attention and you should too. Wait, I'm smart, but not in English. Most girls I know don't know English that well. Well, it's because my father wasn't blessed with sons, so he wanted to educate my sisters and I. And he didn't want me to depend on men like all those poor widows out there. And he felt like he was lucky enough to be able to return to China, like your father got to return back. Because a lot of people died in Gumsan. And did you know our fathers discovered gold together in California? Really? That means we have a lot in common? Sure, now pay attention. For your housekeepers, she added inform. I don't want to leave you, especially now that you have the child. It's okay. I'll be fine. And I have a lot of family here. And you should be back anyways. If we have a boy, what should we name him? What about a girl? Boy or girl, we should name them Wang Lei Yop. A tribute to our family. That child will be our precious jewel. I'll be back. I promise. <sighs> so you married to a Gamsang Hak. He looks like a good man, like your father. I haven't seen him for a long time, but I hope your separation will not be long. 
Thanks, Mama. You haven't thought of me for almost 20 long years. You've banished me to solitude and to my needed brows. It's wrong for lovers to be separated in two places. Oh, you are bad. You don't feel a thing for your poor wife. You only care for your fun and games outside. And I must live with the fate of separation for the rest of my life. Who are you? Uh, Wang Sing Da. It's bullshit. That's what we Chinese face in America. So much humiliation. The police tax of 1862, the commutation tax, banned from public schools in 1863, cubic air ordinance, fishing tax of 1860, and the San Francisco hospital ban of 1860. Listen to this in the annals of San Francisco. The manners and habits of the Chinese are very repugnant to Americans in California. A different language, blood, religion, and character, and an inferior in most mental and body qualities. The Chinaman is looked upon by some only a little superior to the Negro, and by others as somewhat inferior. My father told me about the foreign miners tax. Is that still around? Shit, is that still around? In 1852, they passed the second foreign miners tax, and that's what took out our brother Lee. And then today, that law is still in effect, and it's now 98% of our miners' revenues. The money they collected from the Chinese miners constituted for over 50% of the income in the state of California alone. Man. It's even worse, man. When the Chinese paid their miners' tax and refused to leave their claims, the white devils resorted to intimidation. They hacked our queues, burned down our shacks, beat us, flogged us, and murdered us just because we work harder than them and we're smarter than them. Yes, that brother Lee is my uncle. My father told me all about it. My wife, she hasn't seen her father since she was a toddler. She told me that he came to America to take care of his brother. Brother Duck Hua is a good man, but he had a duty as a brother. I heard he's not doing so well now. Really? I didn't know that. He makes it sound like everything's okay to his wife. My mother-in-law told me that he went north to Seattle. I don't know, man. I don't know, I haven't seen him in a while. Sai Lo, I'm a laborer contractor. The devils cannot do the work that we can do. After the miners tax, we all left the industry. So now we either open up our own shops or we work on the railroad. Many of our people have died building that railroad, but that's the only type of job that we can have. But in this country, you can also be killed for being Chinese. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Elder Wong, why don't we offer him a job in the Central Pacific Railroad? He, he looks young and strong. I heard they're running low on people in Utah and we probably can use another hand. I'll be headed back there myself now that I recover from my injuries. And I can go back earlier. How did you hurt yourself? Damn dynamite. <laughs> nah, actually, someone threw a rock at my head and almost took out my eye. So I slipped and fell and I injured myself. You'll see how many of these white devils hate us. We built for the track for them and then they just throw shit at us. We get paid less than everyone else. We get taxed for everything. Ah, if man, if China weren't so weak, ah, hell with it. I have to help my family back at home. That's what keeps me going. I have a wife and child coming. 
they also motivate me along with my parents and family. Things are very harsh in China. Yes, we heard. But don't even think about bringing your wife and daughter to this country. They think that they are all prostitutes. There's a story about a young girl. She was brought here when she was nine. She was forced to work in servitude for a rich white family as a slave. But stories like this, they don't even hear about it. All they talk about is how we Chinese men pick on Chinese women. They get away with everything in China as well. I look forward towards the day that our country becomes stronger. Hi, Wong Sing Dan. Neho. Neho, I'll be joining you guys as a worker today. You know why they hire us, don't you? The white devils are too lazy. Yeah, they're talking about Crocker, the director of the Central Pacific. He couldn't get enough devils to work. And he said we were too weak. But well, he convinced the president, Leland Stanford, Central Pacific, to hire us because we were stranded in San Francisco with no job because of that stupid foreign miners tax. Yeah, the goddamn Stanford became the governor in 1861. He actually ran on an anti-Chinese platform. He abuses us and then makes the money off of us. Yep. There used to be 50 Chinese here in 1865. Look at us now. There must be several thousand of us. It's hard work. It's shitty work. Deaths are all over. Accidents are all over the place. One time, there was an explosion. We had to pick up the body parts of horses, Chinese people, and even the Lao Fan supervisors. We had to do it, not the whites. We're being paid less even than the whites. They're getting 40 while we're getting 31 for even doing more. Yeah, we can't do nothing. We can't fish, we can't breathe, nothing. There must be another way. There's always another way. Get to work, man. Men in the remote frontier are terrified. In autumn, north winds begin to blow. Soldiers of far away places share the same thought. Oh, how can a little bit clothing make do in the deep frost and heavy snow? Once winter comes, all the more a fur coat is a must in freezing cold. Although I can buy one at a clothing store, no way is it better than the one dear wife or mother has sewn. On June 25th, 1867, Chinese railroad workers were grading and digging tunnels across a stretch of the Sierras when they decide to lay down their tools. The snow still covered the mountaintops. 2,000 Chinese railroad workers strike for eight days, demanding an end to beatings, increased wages, and work hours equal with whites. Central Pacific breaks the strike when they withhold food supplies to the Chinese isolated as they were in the high mountains of the Sierras. There were earlier strikes, but this was a major one, which involved 2,000 Chinese who struck for one week. A month later, however, the Chinese got at least part of their wage increase. They received a $5 increase from $35 to $40 a month. While it is not much, it allowed the Chinese to save face. But in most Western sources, it is rarely publicized the fact that they got a $5 a month increase. Life is like a vast long dream. Why grieve over poverty? A content life soothes 10,000 matters, value the help from other people. In all earnest, just endure. You can forget about all the cold and hunger as you see them often. After lasting through the winter's chill and the snow's embrace, you will find joy in life when happiness comes and sorrow fades. By 1867, between 80 and 90% of the Central Pacific workforce was Chinese. 
The rest was European American descent, mostly Irish. Some 8,000 Chinese focused on building the tunnels while another 3,000 laid track. The Union Pacific, on the other hand, only hired Irish and other whites. The Chinese laborers made up a majority of the Central Pacific workforce that built out the transcontinental railroad east from California. Their greatest challenge was to forge through and over the Sierra Nevada summit, near the pass made infamous by the doomed Donner Party 20 years before. Through two of the worst winters on record, the Chinese, who had come from the semi-tropical climate of southern China, built the roadbed, tunneled through the solid granite cliffs, felled enormous trees, constructed massive trestles, and laid the track. The rails they laid eventually met the track set down by the Union Pacific. In other words, the hardest part of the transcontinental railroad was laid down and built by majority Chinese. They used pick and shovel and explosives to blast the rock from the summit tunnel. Unknown numbers of workers perished in the land and the snow slides, explosions, and disease. The Central Pacific did not see the deaths as important enough to record the names and numbers of those killed. It is estimated, based on skeletal remains, that over 10% of the Chinese hired had died building the railroad. Finally, on May 10, 1869, the Golden Spike was hammered in at Promontory, Utah. We did it! Yeah! yeah! We finished! Oh, yeah! Our achievement is great! Yeah! yeah! Our people are great! Yeah! yeah! Chinese in America are great! Yeah! yeah! No one can deny it! Yeah! 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 From Scientific American, 1869, on the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. The Chinese worker commenced it, and he it was who finished the great work. But for his skill and industry, the Central Pacific Railroad might not have been carried eastwards of the Sierras. The Chinese strength and the endurance are wonderful, and his mechanical skill is remarkable. The Chinese could strike a truer line for a longer distance with an unassisted eye than most white men can with the aid of instruments. The Chinese supervisors who spoke English were very intelligent men and showed extensive acquaintance with railroad matters. The Chinaman is a born railroad builder, and as such, he is destined to be most useful to California and indeed the whole Pacific Slope. Who are you? What do you want? Are you, um, Lee Duckwa? I'm your son-in-law. Wan Sin Dan. I'm the son of Wan Ho Ping. Yes, my wife Rowan told me about you. Thank you for taking care of my family. Bye. Wait. May I come in? Uh, no, I'll come out. Let me get my keys. Takwa, Takwa, who's there? Uh, this is Sing Dan, my relative. When will you come back? Uh, soon. I'll come back soon. Take care. Uh, I should have. Uh, stayed in China as your father did, but I could not. Ago was arrested, then had his queue chopped off in jail. He could never return to China. When he was released, he was a broken man. He sat around Sacramento, doing very little. When I found him, I used the money I had to take him to Los Angeles to work as a cook for one of our relatives. But Los Angeles was a hostile area. I encouraged him to leave, but he wanted to stay. He had no more spirit to move since he stayed 
I stay. A girl was addicted to gambling. After a while, he lost most of his wages. So I worked as a houseboy to a general to help him out. Then, a few years later, the general retired and wanted to go to North Wairika. I asked Ago to come with me, but he said no again. But he promised that he would no longer gamble. I left with the general, hoping to save money to go back to China. Then, last month, I got news that Ago was one of the 19 men shot then hung by 500 white devils. 500. In Los Angeles. Just because he's Chinese. He should never have come to Gamsan. At Wairika, my employer changed. He became an alcoholic. One day, when he was more drunk than usual, he beat me so badly, I think my rib was broken. I left that job, and I was ready to die. I stumbled around, lost my footing, and fell. Eilina saved my life. After the United States took California from Mexico, Eilina's father lost his land to taxes and then he was lynched. Eilina's mother became a prostitute, turned ill, then passed away. This is how Adelina came to be raised in a brothel. That life became her destiny. That day, it was her duty to wash clothes for the house. She saw me and begged her boss to let me stay with her. She paid for my recovery with her money. I don't know why she did it. She said it was because I looked as bad as all, all her life. After several months, when I recovered enough to walk around, I promised her that I would save her. I worked hard to pay for Ling Ling's studies. I worked hard to help my wife in China. I worked hard to help Ago. Then I worked hard to save Adelina. I eventually bought her out of prostitution. We left California, went to Oregon, and came up to Seattle to get away from everything. I cannot leave her. She has no one. And I'm too ashamed to face Ling Ling's mother. Young man, wait. Please give this to Ling Ling and her mother. I brought this when I came from China, and I wrote this letter when I was living in Los Angeles. I never sent it. I haven't seen my daughter since she was two. I do love Ling Ling and my wife, but I also love Adelina. What should I tell Ling Ling? I'm in America. Of course, it's expected to come find you. Tell her, tell her that I'm ill. Tell her I, I can't journey to China. She and her mother should have a, a good life for me. That is all I desire. Can you promise me that? I'm returning to China, probably tomorrow if I can. I'll give this necklace to Ling Ling and the letter to her mother. If, if my grandchildren should ever come to Gomsan, tell them to look for Ye Ye. By then, they should be old enough to understand. I hope it'll be a better life for all of them in China and here. My body aches. My heart pains me all the more. Separation brings even more remorse. Away at the edge of the horizon, everything seems remote. In vain, I long for my virtuous wife and my filial children. For a husband and his wife, the two sorrows share the same origin. I endure sleepless nights thinking of home. I wonder if anybody at home thinks of me. After decades of hostilities toward the Chinese, the United States granted Chinese greater rights. Through the alliance with China during World War II, the Magnuson Act passed on December 17, 1943. It repealed the Chinese Exclusion Act, which allowed Chinese immigration, but only under the quota system that had been established 
in the 1924 Immigration Act, limiting Chinese immigration to 135 per year. By 1946, the United States passed the Chinese War Brides Act, which allowed for a more stabilized Chinese-American community. During the Civil Rights era, the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965 finally abolished the earlier quota system based on a national origin and established a new immigration policy based on reuniting immigrant families and attracting skilled labor to the United States. Over the next four decades, the policies put in forth in 1965 would greatly change the demographic makeup of the American population as immigrants entering the United States under the new legislation came increasingly from countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America as opposed to Europe. Danny Min Dan Wong is the great-grandson of Wong Sing Dan. He is with his wife, Gina. It is May 10, 1969, the 100th anniversary of Golden Spike. That was a long drive from Seattle. Yeah, it was totally worth it. My family took part not only in the building of the West, but really the building of America. You know my ancestor, Wang Sing Dan? Yeah. I think he took part in one of the biggest achievements in the 19th century. Be proud that we were part of that. I think the mayor of San Francisco and some of the California officials here today with ready statements just to talk about all the racism that the Chinese workers had to overcome. How many people do you think there are here right now? Uh, I don't know. Like 18,000, 25,000 maybe? Looks like it, yeah. Oh, look. There's a general council from the Republic of China. Hey. Look at all these people from all the Chinatowns. Oh, I think all the leaders from the Chinese six companies are here too. Mm. No, this is an exciting day. I think Philip <laughs> Choi and Thomas Chin are here, representing San Francisco's Chinese Historical Society of America. They said there's about like five minutes just dedicated to recognize the Chinese workers here. It's about time. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of history books ignoring our contributions. Your great grandpa said that over 10,000 Chinese people worked for the Central Pacific Railroad. Mm -hmm. It's time they finally pay their due respects. Yeah, it's a side day. Even John Wayne is here. Oh, I think Secretary of Transportation John Volpe is about to talk. Welcome, everybody. Today is a proud day. Who else but Americans? could drill 10 tunnels in mountains covered 30 feet deep in snow. Who else but Americans could chisel through miles of granite? And who else but Americans could have laid 12 miles of track in 12 hours? What? Did he just insult us in front of all the Chinese people here? Danny, calm down. Stupid asshole! He doesn't even recognize that Chinese cannot become Americans until 1943. Over 10% of the Chinese died building this railroad. And he said this in front of the General Council and all his Chinese folk too. We'll not forget this slight. I swear on this. We have to tell our kids. And hopefully our kids' kids can do something for us in the future. In February 2019, several Seattle Asian Pacific American groups came together to discuss how to locally honor the Chinese that built the Transcontinental Railroad for the 150th anniversary of its completion. By March, students from the University of Washington's American Ethnic Studies Department and local interns from OCA Asian Pacific Advocates formed the Gamsan to Golden Spike GS2 Committee. Rather than sponsor a lecture on the topic, they decided to write a fictional play, Gamsan to Golden Spike, to teach people the relevance of the Golden Spike Day to Asian Pacific Americans. But with midterms, finals, and spring break challenging their time, they decided to film a story rather than produce a play. On April 4th, GS2 applied for a $5,000 City of Seattle Small Sparks grant. The budget would determine the scope of the film. After receiving the grant on April 8th, GS2 wrote a script in five hours. The actors were GS2 students and others who were available when filming was scheduled and who would fit the limited wardrobe. The students had three weeks to complete the entire film. Most filming occurred during the weekends, including Easter. When the film premiered at Wing Luke Museum, it was standing room only. Among those involved with GS2 was Wendell Wong, granddaughter of Danny and Gina Wong.
Thank you everyone for inviting me. I am Wenda Wong, a student at the University of Washington in Seattle studying American Ethnic Studies and an intern for OCA Greater Seattle. In 1850, my ancestors Wang Ho Ping and Li Duk Hua came to the United States to find their fortune. Their descendant, my great-great-great-great-grandfather, Wang Sing Don, was among those employed by the Central Pacific Railroad and should be credited with building the Transcontinental Railroad. In 1969, during the 100th anniversary of Golden Spike Day, Secretary of Transportation John Volpe asked, who else but Americans could drill 10 tunnels in mountains 30 feet deep in snow? Today, on the 150th anniversary, I would like to respond to Secretary Volpe. Who else indeed? The answer is the Chinese, who drilled 15 tunnels and chiseled through solid granite. Today, we honor the brave, intelligent Chinese who, despite all the racism imposed on them, built the Transcontinental Railroad and started America and the world on its transportation revolution. May 10th, 2019 is a new day. In China, for a better future, we have lion dancers chase away evil. Following this tradition for our Golden Spike celebration, we welcome the Mach 5 Lion Dance Group who will welcome a better future for all of us. Everyone, please welcome the Mach 5 Lion Dance Team. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 